Hello everyone. This is Anuj from Chemical Engineering Concepts. And guys, from today onwards, we are going to start our series on non-ideal reactors. So let's introduce the topic first. The reactors that were, that we generally model by taking various assumptions as ideal reactors are batch, mixed flow reactor, and plug flow reactor. But in the real world, we often observe behavior very different from the expected from the these exemplars. This behavior is true for all the students and all the people who want to deal with the chemical reactors. So to analyze these actual situations, we must learn to diagnose and handle the chemical reactors to understand the performance deviation from the ideal reactors. There, there are actually three concepts that we generally use to describe the non-ideal behavior of a reactor. The first one is we are going to explore today that is the residence time distribution. The second one is the mixing patterns and the third one is the model and these models will be actually used to describe the system. Okay, the, the model we actually mean by the mathematical model. All three of these concepts are considered when describing the deviations from the mixing patterns assumed in the ideal reactors. So let's start to explore our topic today. And let's start with the introduction of what RTD means. It actually means the time the atoms have spent in the reactor, okay, and that we call at the residence time of the atoms inside the reactor. This is general non-ideal patterns that you can see here. Right. So since we measure this distribution of time of all the atoms at the exit of the reactor, that's will that's why we call it as the exit age distribution. Now guys, uh, the, we should know the importance of this uh, RTD, okay? To feel the importance of the RTD, uh, we know about the idealized plug flow and batch reactor, okay? These are the only two classes in which all the atoms in the reactors have the same residence time, okay? The plug flow reactor and the batch reactor. So let's explore the plug flow reactor first, okay? We know this is the basics of the plug flow reactor that you can see here the incoming and the outgoing streams are there and you can see a plug at which the there will be uh, infinite mixing in the radial direction and the and there is no mixing no back mixing in the axial direction or we can say the longitudinal direction so guys there is a flat velocity profile in a pfr so when i'm talking about uh, the uh, non idealities in an uh, in an pfr that's what i mean that there will be a deviation from the laminar flow okay you should understand that for the pfr there is a important assumption that we have a laminar flow in all other types of reactor the various atoms in the feed spent different times inside the reactor that is there is a distribution of residence times of the materials within the reactor Let's take an example of a mixed flow reactor now. So we have a mixed flow reactor. Yes, this is a mixed flow reactor. Okay, so some of the atoms entering the CSTR, we call it also as the continuous stored tank reactor. So some of the atoms entering this uh, MFR leaves it almost immediately because material is being continuously withdrawn from the reactor. Other atoms remain in the reactor almost forever because all the material is never removed from the reactor at one time. And many of the atoms, of course, leave the reactor after spending a period of time somewhere in the vicinity of the mean residence time. Okay, so this is how important to understand the history of the molecules or atoms inside the reactor that is the residence time distribution 
so guys these are the type of non idealities okay when there there is a deviation from the ideality so there must be some non idealities and today we will be exploring them we have a pfr okay so in pfr generally if i saw if i call as the ideal pfr that means we will be having no axial mixing and if any back mixing is introduced that is the non ideality we also want radially everything is to be uniformed in a pfr okay the concentration has to be uniform but if there are non uniformities in the concentration that's what we call as the non ideality as well there could be dead spaces in the corners okay or in the lower part of the tubular reactor and we can also have channeling inside a pfr we also can have the mfr okay there could be non idealities in the mfr as well so dead zones are there in an mfr the recirculation is there in an mfr and there could be bypassing in an mfr okay so these are the common non idealities related to the mixed flow reactor you can see all of them here now uh, you can see the deviation from the two ideal flow patterns okay so we have these two types of uh, reactor arrangements okay so deviation from the two ideal flow patterns can be caused by channeling of the fluid and we can see okay and uh, the uh, deviation can be because of the recycling of the fluid or by the creation of stagnant region in the vessel okay so we can have these type of stagnant region in the corners okay where the reactant comes and get trapped and will not be allowed forever maybe maybe forever to go outside outside the uh, reactor right so guys uh, in all these types of uh, process equipment such as heat exchanger packed columns and reactor types there could be many type of reactors so this type of flow should be avoided because it creates non idealities since it always lowers the performance of the unit okay so we can say you can see the short circuiting as well the reactant coming and just going outside without being reacted inside the reactor you can see one more uh, non idealities uh, in a counter flow two phase operation okay so you can see a counter flow two phase operation in which we can observe a channeling okay so you can see the liquid bubbles these are the liquid bubbles and this is this in orange you can see the air the air will go air will come and just without being completely uh, uh, attached or we can say completely reacted or being phase transfer uh, between the liquid it will go out outside this uh, uh, this column right so you can see this type of uh, non idealities can come inside the process equipment right so how to estimate the rtd this is a very big question guys we have various equipments and we want to measure the history okay the time history of all the molecules inside the reactor so there could be a very important method which is the stimulus response technique that is in which what we are going to do now to measure this rtd what we are going to do actually the ideal situation is what ideal situation is to obtain the information on each and every molecule what information the information about the concentration time temperature sorry and the velocity of each and every molecule okay so we can calculate the conversion inside the reactor now as we know this that uh, to look at each and every molecule it is next to impossible because we are dealing with large reactors hence we should resort on getting information on a group of molecules okay we will here choose a volume and we will uh, measure the changes across that volume so there has to be a control volume here okay we also call it as a packet of molecules and we will use tracer technique or we precisely call it as the stimulus response technique in the tracer technique what we will do we will insert some different foreign material inside our reactor and we see the 
when we when it will come out of the reactor what pattern does it follows okay so here we see we can like measure the residence time distribution inside the reactor so the rtd is determined experimentally by injecting an inert material which we are calling as the tracer into the reactor at any time t equal to 0 so how the stimulus response technique works and at tm t equal to 0 i will add some amount of tracer and then in measuring the concentration c in the influent stream as a function of time okay this is our simple technique this is our reactor which is a real vessel you can see that we are measuring here about uh, we are taking here the pfr you can see the pfr right there is a tracer which is injected at the inlet right and we have a probe at the outlet that will measure the uh, exit stream okay and this uh, effluent effluent of the tracer will be measured at the outlet okay so this is what we have now in addition to being a non reactive species these are the basic qualities of there there are there are basic qualities of this tracer amount uh, tracer element okay so this has to be a non reactive species that is easily detectable this tracer tracer material should have uh, physical properties very similar to those of the reacting mixture and it should be completely soluble in the mixture guys these are the important properties that you can write it should also not absorb on the walls or other surface inside the reactor these are the basic properties of a tracer more preferably it could be a colored and radioactive material along with there could be inert gases okay which are the common examples to be used as tracer material the two most used methods of injection are pulse input and the step input and what you are watching here is simply the pulse input the effluent concentration versus time curve is referred to as the c curve okay guys you can see a c curve here this is what we will be getting after the rtd analysis we shall analyze the injection of a tracer pulse uh, for a single input and single output a system in which only flow and not the dispersion carries the tracer material okay so there will be no back mixing i already told you that we are supposing it to be a pfr so we are assuming that there will be no dispersion and we will measure the uh, tracer uh, we will have the movement of the tracer material just because of the flow okay so only flow carries the tracer material across the system boundaries this is how the stimulus response technique will work and q is the flow rate that we will get at the outlet now uh, it's an understood thing that a fluid element taking different routes through the reactor and so take different lengths of time to pass through the vessel the distribution of these times for the stream of the fluid leaving the vessel is called the exit age distribution which is represented by et okay uh, or we can call it as the residence time distribution rtd of the fluid it has a unit of time inverse so we have different things related to the exit age distribution that you can see here the total area under this e curve is obviously one then that will we will prove further and if i talk about some fraction okay if i talk about some fraction uh, anything if you call anything at time t equal to one so from this point till the end of this curve till the point where the curve ends and touches the x-axis that will be called as the fraction of the exit stream which is older than the time t1 okay you should remember these terms how we are defining them how we are defining the e curve and how to define the different fractions guys okay so let's so let's look at the basic two types of fluids 
that we have so first one you can see is the microfluid okay we can we can see the microfluids which uh, are generally gases and ordinary not very viscous liquids in these microfluids what happens is that individual molecules are free to move about and intermix and if i talk about the other type of fluid that is macrofluids in the macrofluids we have non coalescing droplets which we call as the solid particles solid like particles and actually they are very viscous liquids what happens in the macrofluids is that molecules are kept grouped together okay grouped together in some aggregates and packets so these are the two major uh, types of fluids that we generally deal in the reactors now let's look at some examples of these micro and macro fluids so guys let's see the two examples that we have now we have first the sparger reactor okay so you can see the gas is coming out uh, inside uh, the reactor as droplets okay we can see the bubbles okay and liquid is coming right so here in this case of sparger reactor the gas is acting as a macrofluid while the liquid is acting as a microfluid okay opposite to it if we just look at the spray reactor we can see the gas coming from the bottoms and going outlet in the outlet and liquid is coming up as the droplets okay so here the liquid will be called as a macrofluid while the gas will be called as the microfluid okay so it depends on the operation if the gas uh, lies in the macrofluid side or the macro microfluid side okay so these are the two examples so guys let's summarize uh, today's video we today introduced you to the uh, non ideal reactors and also we did uh, a basic discussion on the residence time distribution okay in the upcoming videos we will be um, going much deeper into the tracer techniques that is the pulse tracer and the strap tracer techniques and we will go that uh, how you have to uh, obtain a exit is the distribution function that is e curve and from that e curve how can you go back to the c curve okay and all these things everything related to the non ideal reactors will be discovered in the upcoming videos right so guys uh, i would just like you guys to subscribe to my youtube channel that is the chemical engineering concepts and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any update so we shall meet you in the next session till then goodbye